So one of the first questions when using a Android or iOS device is what settings should we use? Well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that you can usually just set it up and forget it. The bad news is it's not going to magically make everything look great. The camera apps themselves are usually pretty good at kind of guessing what it is you need at any given moment based on lighting and composition, uh, but that doesn't mean they always get it right. <laughs> um, that is a more advanced topic. What I want to do right now is just make sure that you have the settings on the phone that will give you footage that is usable in the most situations later. I have an iPad, the only device I have access to right now, but it'll let us see the settings. And iOS, so you go into settings, scroll down to camera. Here are your camera settings. We're going to start with uh, record video, the second option from the top. Record video usually defaults to 1080p 30. So 1080p is the resolution and 30 frames per second, the number of pictures per second of video. 1080p 30 is your normal video. Even if I'm delivering a final video in 1080, I tend to shoot in 4K because then I can zoom in on that shot without losing much quality. Uh, you can still do that in 1080. People are kind of used to it these days, but I shoot at 4K for higher quality. Now, I also tend to shoot at 4K 60, and 60 frames per second lets me slow down the footage by 50% to get a really smooth slow motion for free. So if I'm shooting B-roll, I'm almost always shooting in 4K 60. If your phone doesn't have the option for 4K, or if you want to save space, then you're going to be going back and forth, most likely between 1080p 30 and 1080 60. So we'll just leave it where I tend to have it 4K 60. Now that's going to chew through your phone storage pretty quickly. So be aware of that. Down Towards the bottom here, I have video format control. And what that does is it gives you these options for these different video formats in the camera app itself. So you don't have to go back to settings. So I turn that on. Back to the regular settings here. Now that we know I want to shoot at 4K60, let's go into formats right there at the top. And high efficiency is a much more compressed video, which makes it harder to edit later. It's Your app will treat it just like any other video. Your app can sort that out. You don't have to do any different work. But the phone or computer itself is going to have to do much more work with a high efficiency video rather than a most compatible. But if you can read the fine print there, um, this device has to be shooting in high efficiency video in order to shoot in 4K60. Okay, Apple, high efficiency it is. I'll deal with it later. Recording slow-mo. Again, I usually record in 60 so I get a free slow motion. I tend not to use these slow motion modes, um, but you can. So which one you choose, 120, 240 is up to you. 240 is really slow. What is that? 120 is a factor of four. So you can slow your video down by four times. And 240, I guess, then is a factor of eight. You can slow your video down to really slow motion. It's not going to be bullet time like the Matrix, but it'll be pretty slow. It's pretty cool that it can do that. Um, but look at the file sizes listed below. Uh, for the file size alone, I tend to leave it at 120 because I'm not going to be using 240. And if I am, I'm going to go in, change those settings for just for that shot, and then change them back. Grid will put the rule of thirds grid on the screen for you. Smart HDR in this case is applying only to photos and this device doesn't shoot HDR video, high dynamic range video. Um, so you can leave Smart HDR on and your photos will look nicer, but you do not want to be shooting in high dynamic range video. It'll look great on your device, your phone, but when you try and use it in an editing program or show it to someone else, then you can run into problems. So turn HDR off. So let's look at Android. So Android devices have kind of an issue that iOS devices don't have, and that is that each manufacturer has to do things kind of their own way. Um, so Google phones and Samsung and uh, Sony phones are all going to be a little bit different. However, the settings are all more or less the same. They might be called something slightly different or in a slightly different place, but they're the same sort of thing. So this is a Samsung device. This is an S23 Ultra. Wow, fancy, huh? My wallet's still not talking to me. On this device, there are some settings across the top that you can see there. So let's look at this one. That's the video size. 
and resolution. I have it set to UHD 60, ultra high definition of 4K. And then there's full HD, which is 1080, full HD 30, 1080p 30, so on. So you know me, I shoot in UHD 60 or 4K 60, so I can slow it down or zoom in if I want. So let's go into the settings here. Video stabilization I tend to leave on because I'm hand holding this phone a lot. Uh, you want to know where to turn that off though because if you put the phone on a tripod and the stabilization is on, sometimes it can wander a little as this poor, confused stabilization tries to feel useful. Um, can mess things up. Uh, grid lines, there it is. That gives you the rule of thirds, rule of thirds grid. After a while you get used to it, you don't need it anymore, but it's handy as a reminder. Let's go into advanced video options. So here is HDR10, HDR10 plus, uh, that's 10 bit plus, and that's what Samsung calls it. Anyway, if, you, if your phone can shoot HDR, turn that off. It's not a better version of video. It's a different version of video. So it's like diesel and gasoline. They don't go in the same engines. So turn HDR off for now. High efficiency videos. This is a high efficiency versus compatibility in uh, iOS. Same thing. On the Samsung device, I have the option to prioritize video quality or prioritize saving space. Uh, because of the kind of video that I'm shooting, I'm usually more interested in quality than saving space, so that's how I have that set. If you have the option, it's up to you. You may want to save space. Most people are going to notice the difference in the quality of the video. And those are the settings. Not too intimidating, right? Pretty simple. Um, the, the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper, but we'll leave it there for now uh, and handle all the other things about like exposure control, uh, framing, lighting, that kind of stuff. We'll look at that later. Those settings are safe. They'll get your device into the ballpark with the rest of the video that might be shot on things like the cinema camera and whatnot. So that'll get you started.